Hello everyone, I am Bharat Singla and welcome to Codeship. Here you will find everything to learn and master competitive programming. So you know the drill with YouTube. If you have not subscribed yet, then make sure to subscribe to the channel to not miss any of the future videos. Great. Hello everyone and welcome to the playlist on graph theory. This is by far the most overrated, overhyped concept but not to mention is a bit overlooked as well. A lot of people, in, I don't know why, but including me, when I just started with graphs, used to fear it a lot. So that's my aim for this playlist, to completely diminish that fear from you. So let's start off by understanding what are trees and graphs. And instead, let's just leave this. Right, so let's just leave this. I want you to instead, just imagine. Two scenarios. The first is this one, and this is a map, right? So I am taking a few states of India, few northern states, right? Some some part of the Indian map, and here these are some states, right? That are connected to each other. So if these are the only cities that exist, and these are the only roads, the purple ones, then this forms a kind of a map. So as you can see, that this state Haryana is connected to Delhi and Rajasthan, Delhi is connected to Haryana and UP, right? So these are roads. And if two cities are connected with a road, this means that you can travel from one city to the another, right? So, and it may be that you may not be able to necessarily travel from Madhya Pradesh to Rajasthan to Haryana maybe, right? But you can indirectly go there by following some path, right? So you can first go to Rajasthan and then go to Haryana, or you can go to UP, then Delhi, then Haryana, right? So there are multiple possible paths and getting the feel of this scenario that there are some cities that are connected to each other, right? Now, this was the first scenario and here comes the second scenario that there's a rat which who wants to eat cheese. So he's in a grid, a grid of cells and he's let's say on some starting cell, he wants to reach the ending cell but he can not travel to all the neighboring cells, right? So he can go up, down, left, right, but of course some cells are blocked. So these are some walls that are there, right? So for not all the cells can he travel in all the directions. So he wants to traverse through this maze and end up eating that delicious cheese. Fine, so this is the second scenario and there are much, much, much more than that. For example, that if I head over to Wikipedia, right, and I have open any article, let's say one on algorithms. Okay, so here comes a Wikipedia page, and in this there are multiple links. So there's one link on mathematics, so let's open this. Then there's another one on computer science, right? And if I now go to these Wikipedia articles, so from here you can go to patterns, right? From computer science, you can go to Again, this is algorithms only. You have computational machines. From pattern, you can go to multiple more like geometric shapes and all. So this way, an article links to some other articles. Right, so this is another scenario and there are much, much more. So coming back, let me ask you one question. That is, can you find something similar to all of them? Right, so this is the question and yes, the answer is that some data like here in the first example the data could be the cities right where a city stores the information of what city it is and which cities are connected to it in the second scenario a cell a one cross one square could be the data which stores can i go up can i go left can i go right can i go down right and some of them would be no because there are walls right so these are some data in the wikipedia's case the articles are the data which link to some other articles. So when data is connected to each other, when we establish some form of a relation between objects, that forms a graph. So in simple words, in simple terms, right, I understand that a lot of you would be from different sources who have already learned this, but even after scratching their head a lot, they couldn't understand anything. So that's why I'll try to explain everything in simple terms. And the simplest definition of a graph, the non-mathematical, non-technical definition is when data is connected it forms a graph 
so in a way all these cities and these roads are data which is connected to each other right so now introducing some terminology although i'll create a separate video on that because there are much much more but these are two things you need to understand for now is that data is known as nodes or vertices right so if you have learned about linked list nodes are used there as well right so all these objects can be are called in graph theory as nodes or vertices whatever you want to call them and these connections are known as edges so the establishment of edges between nodes forms a graph so in the above case right a cell would be connected to all the four neighbors and there's an imaginary edge between them in the first case you have the cities these are the nodes so cities are essentially our nodes or vertices and the roads are our edges right so this forms a graph and in the wikipedia case the articles were our nodes and all the articles that are linked to it are again linked by some imaginary link that forms an edge so from one node you can spread to some other nodes from those individual nodes you again spread right so this introduces another concept of spreading out so you have learned about data structures like arrays you have learned about linked lists then you have learned about stacks queues pairs priority queues and what not but all these come under one category because they can be represented something like this right a kind of a line a kind of a box right so these are some linear data structures right so they come under linear data structures whereas graphs as you can see although can be represented in a line but is a like a 2d image right so it is a non linear or a two dimensional data structure right or it could be three dimensional as well it depends but it is non linear so it's like not in a line it is a kind of a spread so that's the difference and that maybe creates this ambiguity of that it's so hard right that impression but it is not the simple idea is connection of data right so now coming on to the technical definition you have that a graph g can be written as can be uniquely defined as the set of as a pair of um, vertices and edges right so if this is my graph say i create another graph right so i'm just creating some nodes and connecting them with edges right so if this is the graph let's say and this is 1 this is 2 this is 3 this is 4 this is 5 this is 6 i'm just randomly numbering them right so this graph this graph would be um uh, this graph would become a set of vertices that is 1 2 3 4 5 6 right and a set of edges so how to represent an edge well an edge is again uniquely defined by the starting and ending point so there's an edge from 1 to 2 there's another edge from 2 to 3 there's one from 2 to 1 as well or if you are talking about unordered pairs right then there's from 1 to 5 then there's from 5 to 4 then you have one from 5 to 6 right so this way if i give you these two these two data the vertices and the edges you can form a graph so these are this is all about graphs right getting a feeling of what a graph is and now let's talk about what trees are and for that the prerequisite is nodes and edges so that's why i talked about them but in the next video we'll discuss about types of graphs what are directed undirected edges what are cyclic acyclic graphs what are kind of trees like binary trees binary search trees and all that stuff right so we'll be discussing all of that but for now you need to know what nodes and edges are so now coming on to what are trees then so in a node in a graph if there are n nodes 
and there are n edges right so a tree has n nodes and n minus 1 edges right so if a graph follows this condition so this is an if condition right if and only if a graph has n nodes and exactly n minus 1 edges in that case it can be called a tree so taking the above example is this graph a tree right so in this case how many vertices do you have denoted by this right you have six vertices how many edges do you have you have five edges so in this case yes n are the number of nodes six and six minus one five are the number of edges so this is a tree cool so this also means that it won't have any cycle so you cannot start from a node and end back on it right because you do not traverse in multiple ways right but we'll discuss all of that for now if any graph has follows these two conditions right in that case it's called a tree but tree is not only limited to that why would you even have another name for graph that just has a peculiar condition well that is because graph is not hierarchical whereas a tree is right so i'm just drawing a tree so in this case as you can see this is the topmost node right this is the top or it is also called the root fine and then it has two kind of children to it and then they have multiple children so a tree denotes hierarchy it's a hierarchical data structure because and it's pretty easy to understand as well take up your family tree so on the top you have your maybe grandfather then you have your father then your mother and then you and then you are there and so on right so it forms a hierarchy from top to down or take the structure of any big enterprise so it has the founder on the top then you have the ceo under it then there could be multiple branch heads like director or the uh, maybe the business head or the marketing head and under them you have some managers and under them you have the employees then maybe interns or whatever right so that also is a kind of a tree right and this also follows the condition of this nn and minus one specifically right a single node graph is a tree because there's one node and there are zero edges right and it follows that if i add any new node and i for that i have to edge add a new edge if i'm not adding an edge something like this back right so i added another edge but i did not add a node so if we are not doing that then it follows that since initially the given graph of a single node is a tree and at each point you increment the number of edges as well as the number of nodes so it will always follow this condition of n and n minus 1 so whenever you're forming a tree just keep on adding nodes and for each node just link it with a new edge so you should not basically add a new edge without adding a node right so this way you can form a tree so yes that was all about trees and graphs and just to give you an example a linked list is also a tree and does this mean that a tree is also a graph and yes it is because trees linked list or in a way all the data structures that have some connection are all a special type of a graph if a graph follows these two conditions right then it's called a tree if a graph is linear then it can be called as a linked list right and so on the possibilities are infinite and the number of problems that can be formed are infinite as well so taking the above example on just giving you the feeling of what how they actually are useful right so if i go on this first example so you could be asked that find the shortest path from delhi to rajasthan so there are multiple ways and you need to find the shortest path because these roads also have some length right delhi is maybe close to haryana but uh, rajasthan is very far away from up right so not all of them are of the same value so the shortest part could differ and all of that you could be asked if that can you even reach one city from the other and so on so this is a graph a non linear data structure with trees being a special form of a graph and a graph is simply connection of objects so yes that wraps it up guys for this one i hope you follow along for the next one as well where we learn about 
types of trees and graphs, the terminologies, we'll solve a problem as well. We'll learn about how to traverse a graph and we'll also learn about how to store and represent graph in your code because you cannot just click a screenshot of this graph and tell your code that, hey, this is the graph. No, you need to have some kind of a data structure to represent graph and we'll be learning about all of that. So this is Vera Singla from CodeShare signing off for now and I will see you next time.